equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex, the Equal Rights Amendment. Most Americans believe it's part of our Constitution today, but it's not. Chief uh, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg stated, and I quote, every constitution written since the end of World War II includes a provision that men and women are citizens of equal stature. Ours does not. State of Maryland has a provision very similar to that in its state constitution. Many of our states have acted on the Equal Rights Amendment. But as Justice Scalia, the late Justice Scalia said, Certainly, the Constitution does not require discrimination on the basis of sex. The only issue is whether it prohibits it. It doesn't. We need to pass the Equal Rights Amendment in the Constitution of the United States for many reasons. The most basic reason, it provides additional protection against discrimination against women. It has a higher standard to prevent discrimination. It uh, shows America's leadership globally on human rights. So Congress in 1972 started the process by passing the Equal Rights Amendment. We passed it in 1972. Now, of course, it requires 38 states to ratify before it becomes law. And to date, 37 states have ratified the Equal Rights Amendment. We're one short of accomplishing our objective of putting the Equal Rights Amendment at long last in the Constitution of the United States. But there's an additional hurdle, or a potential hurdle. And that is, when Congress passed the resolution in 1972, it put a seven-year time limit for the states to act. Now, they extended that to 10 years, and this is strictly a provision that is discretionary to Congress. Article 5 of the Constitution puts no limit on the time for ratification of the constitutional amendment proposed by Congress for the states to ratify. In fact, the 27th Amendment was ratified in 1992. It deals with congressional pay raise. It was first proposed in 1789 to be part of the Bill of Rights. Over 200 years later, it was ratified. So there's no time limit in the Constitution for the ratification of a constitutional amendment. To remove any doubt, Congress should extend the time as it did once before. So in order to accomplish that, I joined with Senator Murkowski, the senator from Alaska, a bipartisan effort with Senate Joint Resolution 6 that removes the deadline, the time limit, on the passage of the Equal Rights Amendment. And I would ask unanimous consent, Madam President, that include in the record an op-ed piece written by Senator Murkowski and myself in regards to why we need to get that resolution passed. Without okay. objection. So on November 13th, the House Judiciary Committee took up a very similar resolution, House Joint Resolution 79 by Representative Jackie Speer. And they now have reported it out favorably. So we now have, moving through the House of Representatives, a resolution that would remove this time limit that was imposed in the 1970s on the ratification of the Equal Rights Amendment. So what I'm imploring upon my colleagues, we're very close to getting this done. We know there was a change in the leadership in Virginia. Virginia could very well be the 38th state. But let us remove the ambiguity as to a time limit we will celebrate in this Congress the 100th anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment of the Constitution, the Women's Suffrage Amendment, passed in 1920. And in this Congress, we will celebrate, and I think all of us will join, in how, uh, why it took so long for women to have the right to vote. Well, people are asking, why is it taking so long to put in the Constitution in the United States, the Equal Rights Amendment? We have a plan that we can get this done by passing the resolution I talked about for the 38th state to ratify, and at long last, that the United States provides the leadership on universal human rights by placing the Equal Rights Amendment in our Constitution. With that, Madam President, I would suggest the absence of a quorum.